This lesson will use Desmos to explore the transformations of y equals a times sine of the quantity bx minus c plus d. And the same transformations apply for the sine function as well as the cosine function, where the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, and if a is less than zero, we have a reflection across the midline. The period is equal to two pi divided by the absolute value of b for radians, and 360 degrees divided by the absolute value of b for degrees. The phase shift or horizontal shift is c divided by b, or we can solve the equation bx minus c equals zero. If c divided by b is positive, the phase shift or horizontal shift is right. If it's negative, the shift is left. And the midline is y equals d, and therefore d gives a vertical shift. If d is positive, the graph is shifted up d units. If d is negative, the graph is shifted down d units. Let's explore all of these using Desmos.com. So I've already set this up. I have the graph of y equals sine x in orange. The length of the green segment represents the amplitude, which is the distance from the midline to the maximum, or the distance from the midline to the minimum. I've also graphed a vertical lines at x equals zero and x equals two pi that represent one period of the sine function. And now to explore the transformations, we will begin by graphing y equals a times sine of the quantity bx minus c plus d, where a is equal to one, b is equal to one, and c and d are both equal to zero, which will give us the same graph of the basic sine function, which we see here. And now we will change the values of a, b, c, and d, and see how it affects the graph of the basic sine function. Remember, the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, so as a increases, the amplitude increases. Or we can say the graph is vertically stretched. If a is between negative one and one, the amplitude is less than one, and we can say the graph is vertically compressed. Notice when a is negative, we also have a reflection across the midline, or in this case, across the y-axis. Let's go ahead and set a back to one, and now change the value of b. Remember, two pi divided by the absolute value of b is equal to the period, so as b increases, Notice how the period decreases, or we can say the graph is compressed horizontally. When b is between negative one and one, the period increases, and we can say the graph is horizontally stretched. And notice when b is negative, we have a reflection across the y-axis. Let's set b back to one. And now let's change the value of c. Remember the phase shift or horizontal shift is c divided by b, and since right now b is equal to one, the value of c will be the phase shift or horizontal shift. So when c is positive, notice how the graph is shifted right c units, in this case again because b is one. Notice how when c is positive though, we would have subtraction in the input of the sine function because we have minus a positive value of c. And when c is negative, the graph is shifted left, in this case c units, again because b is one. And when c is negative, we would have minus a negative, which is equivalent to plus a positive. But again, remember the phase shift is equal to c divided by b. So for example, if we set c back to four, and then change the value of b, this is going to change the phase shift as well as the period of the function. So if b is equal to two, for example, the phase shift is four divided by two, or two units to the right, and the period is now two pi divided by two, or pi radians. So just keep in mind in this form, the phase shift is not just c, it's c divided by b. Let's go ahead and set b back to one and c back to zero, and we'll change the value of d. 
Remember, the equation of the midline is y equals d. So if d is positive, the graph is shifted up d units, and the midline is y equals d. And when d is negative, the graph is shifted down d units, and again, the midline is y equals d. So I think it is helpful to spend some time exploring how the values of a, b, c, and d affect the graph of the sine function when the equation is in this form. I hope you found this helpful.